Okay, welcome back. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to then simulate a microstrip line. I like to refer you to the previous video where we create the following geometry on the screen. Okay, once you have a microstrip line, the first thing we want to do is set up our ports to excite the microstrip line, which will then excite it and also measure the S yes parameters. And this is a two port device, so we need two waveguide ports. Okay. The first thing to do is to zoom in onto the one of the faces of the end of the microstrip line. We're going to use the short key S on our keyboard to select either a line, a face. We're going to select the face of the microstrip. Double click and you'll see the pattern appear on the selected surface. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to go over to one of our macros under home macros and try remember this it's macros solver ports calculate port extension coefficient as soon as the window appears you're going to click the three buttons in order calculate construct close perfect we've done one port let's click control left click to move to the other side i'm going to flip it over and we're going to zoom in and do the exact same process click s on your keyboard Click on the face of the microstrip line, head over to macros, calculate, oops, sorry, macros, solver, ports, calculate port extension coefficient. Now, once the window appears, we're going to click calculate, construct, close. Click spacebar to reset your view, hold control, left click to move it back to an appropriate orientation. Okay. Perfect. Now we're nearly ready to go to simulate, but first what we're going to do is always double check our boundaries. So first we can click on frequency one to five. Sure, that sounds all right. Boundaries is the most important part here. In the current form that the boundaries are in, we're going to see maybe body resonance and we're gonna see errors within our S parameters. So to solve this an easy way, is to first initially apply in all directions. Change the first um, type to open add space. Okay, this adds a little bit of space around everything to make sure we're not getting any body resonance. And then we're gonna deselect apply in all directions. So we need to make sure that on the bottom surface, there's actually a zero potential or ground connected. To do this, we're going to go Z min, Electric zero ground. Now this is going to increase the simulation time. So to slow it down, we can actually push in our two X directions because it's not touching any microstrip line. So I'm going to go X and then another X here. Just a small, uh, shorten down our working space. Sometimes if you can find if you put a ground close to the port, you may see some errors. However, it's also possible to just have um, the, the positive Z direction to open add space and you can get a good result. I'm going to leave it as follows. I'm going to click OK. Perfect. Now I'm going to click on Setup Solver. Now here's our most important button that we need to be aware of when selecting. The Normalize S parameters. So we can think of this like we're measuring the, vi the device we're going to force both of the ports to be 50 ohms such that when the energy comes out of the port and interfaces a mismatch load, there will be reflections. For example, if this line is actually 48 ohms, we're going to have a small mismatch between the waveguide port and the 48 ohms of the line. However, we know from calculations that this is not going to be too much. If we want the waveguide port to match the port impedance perfectly over frequency, we're going to leave this deselected. It's always in best practice to normalize um, your S parameters. Or if you would like to see the losses of your circuit and you don't want to include the port impedance losses, um, then you deselect this. But best practice, leave it selected. You're always going to be connecting your microwave circuit to a 50 ohms uh, network or system. Okay. Now we know our frequency range, we're going to click start. 
Okay, this should take a couple of minutes. I'll be back when it's finished. Okay, the simulation's finished for me. It took about one to two minutes. If the simulation time is too long, we can now change the board size to be a lot smaller. However, we want to try not to mess up with the mesh accuracy. It's got adaptive meshing and for this current exercise, it's fine to just leave it as stock standard. Okay, once it's completed, you can navigate over to your navigation tree and head towards 1D results. Click the drop down. Click on S parameters. By clicking on S parameters in a two port network, we get all of our four measurements, S11, 21, 12, and 22. Now, we are using um, a material which has not considered the loss in the substrate, and we're using PEC, so there's no losses in, in the conductor material. So we're seeing a really ideal case. However, if you were to use copper and maybe some Rogers board, or even worse, perhaps some FR4, which has a lot of loss at high frequencies, we'll see this response change um, significantly. We won't see negative 30, we might see negative 20, and it shift up to maybe negative 10, just depending on the material we're using. Okay, so we click the drop down bar and get just single out the S parameters here, but we can keep it quite full. Let's focus on the S11. The most important thing here is to view this in the Smith chart. So here's our Smith chart. We can see it's just moving about this point, and that's how we're achieving uh, quite a good match between ports. So remember, it's going from a 50 ohm port into ideally the 50 ohm line, and then out to a 50 ohm port. So there's little um, mismatch, therefore um, little reflections. Let's move over to check um, other things within the 1D results. Head over to port information. Now this is very important. By clicking on port information, effective dielectric constant, we can see what the simulator is using for the effective dielectric constant. And if you were to work out other parameters um, with some equations, you could then input this value for effective dielectric constant. Gamma here is very important if we would like to test a transmission line, a microstrip line, and we would like to calculate, well, at what length is it a quarter wavelength? And we can take this value of beta from our propagation constant, and then we can calculate um, the total length needed for a quarter wavelength. Line impedance is a very important one. This is able to calculate or show us what the impedance is of that port. So we've forced our waveguide port to be 50 ohms. And from it calculating, it's actually at 3 gigahertz, it's 49.2. So a little tiny bit of mismatch. We could then tune this, um, but a 1 ohm mismatch is, uh, at 50 ohms is, is, is not bad at all. Um, wave impedance, we don't need to focus on too much yet. Another important one is the reference impedance. So the reference impedance is going to be what the waveguide uh, port thinks its impedance is. We've selected that checkbox that says force it to 50 ohms. If we didn't click that checkbox, you'll find that this graph will be exactly the same as the line impedance graph. Ideally, it copies it, therefore a perfect match between the port and the transmission line. So you need to think of the use case when you want to use this. However, I recommend always setting it to 50 ohms for now. Okay, this is the interpretation of results of a microstrip transmission line. Tune in for the next video where I'll talk about loads and mismatch loads. Thank you.